Now see, let me let the record reflect. Anthony has needed a spinoff since the 99 and the 2000. I don't know why they are not using the treasure that is Anthony Scaramaldi. What? My boy Elton Anthony is hard down to tell you, baby. Don't I don't know Italian cousins. What's his name? Anthony. I know it end with a vowel. I know that. He needs a spinoff. Okay, I don't know why they haven't gave Anthony a spinoff. Anthony is funny AL. Anthony got a job with some fine men. You know what I'm saying? We could just be rotating fine men in and out of the show. He's single in the city, baby. He's having sex in the city, okay? Just willy-nilly sex, okay? I'm sure he's being responsible because Anthony don't play that, but I'm just saying, we could why, we could do that. Anthony is age appropriate. He grumpy and he ain't playing that shit with these children out here in these streets, okay? He want to look at your yam. He want to look at your butt. If you find, he might want to get on down and take you down where you need to go, okay? And then he going home. Why we can't watch that? Anthony is fun. I want to see his how he make his sourdough. Now, they don't never give us enough Anthony. I have never gotten enough Anthony. And I don't know why Anthony be yelling at every single body. And he don't play that shit. Let you give him bad customer service in the store. I watch that all day long. But yet you giving me Miranda in a thick ass sweater. And I don't want to check. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for checking out this video. It's your girl, LB and Blue. Welcome to our channel, Watch With Me LB, where we give you fun, fresh, and funny rants, reviews, and recaps on our favorite movies and TV shows. Aiden is back. Aiden is back, y'all. Aiden look good. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. Aiden was cute. All right, Nana, say hello to your cousins. Come on. You wanna say hello today? Say hello. Say hello to your cousins. Say hello, cousins. All right. He's a blueberry. He's a blueberry lemon twist. 20 ounce from Smoothie King. Y'all, I've seen Shania, these eyeballs, have seen Shania Twain with my own self eyeballs. When that girl said, let's go girls, I died on the floor of the Smoothie King Center. Do you understand? Shania Twain looks good, honey. Sis says she having the time of her life, she wearing wigs and short ass dresses and her titties is up to her collarbone and that's what I'm talking about. You better not ever Ask me to go nowhere on a Monday. Cause it's Thursday and when I tell you I'm tired still to this day. I don't know what I was thinking. First of all, I had to go to work on Tuesday. I was like, oh yeah, your meeting start late in the day. You could do it and you could the the girl stop. Future L. Hey girl, how you doing? Don't you go your ass nowhere on a on a Monday. Stay at the house, baby. Make you some food, order you some DoorDash, do your little load of clothes. Watch your golden girls and take your old ass to sleep. Don't go nowhere during the week. So we went to my favorite restaurant, Copper Vine in New Orleans. And we had dinner and drinks. Stop. Don't, don't do it. It's gonna take you five to seven business days to recover. You were one row behind a certified slopopotamus. What's a slopopotamus, L? Somebody that cannot handle the alcohol. I like, I, I wrote this next song trying to get a record deal in Nashville. Y'all be coming to New Orleans and like, oh yeah, I'm about to, we about to get slizzard. Baby girl was hot and intoxicated. She was a hot tox, okay? She was a slopopotamus. She had a beer in her hand and spo spilled the beer on herself, on her Shania Twain wig. That didn't stop sis. Sis took the wig off and twirled it around. to dance to that don't impress me much. Then Shania hit us with every man of mine better walk the line. And homegirl got out the aisle trying to go dance in the aisle and tripped and fell on a security that was standing right there. And then the security guard put our whole section on punishment. We couldn't get out. Couldn't get out and dance. I was like, dang, slop a part of it. You messed us up. Let me also insert a clip of my t-shirt that I'm wearing today. Cause you know, you can't use it. See it from here where I'm at. My son took a picture for me and it's in, our, in his game room. Okay, it's in my baby's game room. So that's why I'm standing in the cloud. Shirt, I'm wearing my husband Oscar Isaac's shirt. I have to support him. I don't want no skip skags and scallywags talking about my man, my man, my man, other than his wife. Okay, I'm just, you know, I'm not just. So Aiden has responded back to Carrie's email and she can't even bring herself to open up the email. And I'm like, girl, We've been waiting 42 years. Answer that damn email, please. Like, don't, we don't need no suspense at this point, child. Just rip the bandaid off and let's go. But she goes to, I'm assuming it's lunch with Charlotte and Miranda to talk about what happened with Aiden. Aiden responded and, you know, he asked me out to dinner this carrot on Thursday. And Charlotte's like, oh my God, 
what? It's Valentine's Day. He asked you on Valentine's Day. And so Charlotte is doing the math, right? Because she's like, okay, so if he asked you out on Valentine's Day, that means that either he knew it was Valentine's Day and asked you to go to dinner with him on Valentine's Day, be my Valentine's babe, or he doesn't know it's Valentine's Day and just asked you out and whatever. So she's trying to do the math, like trying to figure out what his intentions were by asking her out on Thursday. Charlotte is like, Miranda, what you got going on? Do you have any ladies on the horizon? Miranda's like, well, what make you think it's ladies? And then I'm thinking to myself, because you, Che is non-binary, yeah, but I thought you wasn't, you wasn't on yams no more. So that, you know, I don't, I know it's the wine and not the label. I get it. I get that part. But, like, don't don't be getting sported with Charlotte because she assumed that she was going to go and have, get with a lady on Valentine's Day. Anyway, you know, I was just attracted to Che. I don't even know if it's ladies on the, the horizon. Che is non-binary. I was attracted to Che. I'm thinking, why? Why were you attracted to Che? Now, I think that at this point, Miranda is taking a knitting class. All right, because it's apparent it's February. Okay, I didn't I didn't know what month we were in when Plava Laguna was walking down the the sidewalk in her big ass dress and Charlotte was being a dummy looking for condoms. Okay, I didn't know what month it was, but now we know it's February. So February is the maybe the third time or so we've seen Miranda in some heavy knits, baby. Okay, and so I'm like, okay, maybe that's what she's doing to pass the time. Maybe they just didn't talk about it because Miranda be knitting knitting me up and knitting me out baby i'm talking about knit from the chin to the toes child heavy knit coats heavy knit sweaters oversized double knit thick ass knit sweaters girl you taking a crochet class girl because everybody else got on like a normal charlie got a bow on now she got a you know she got the little tea and crumpets outfit and carrie got on something child but miranda is gonna slap me in my face with these knit tops bottom skirt scarves and and socks girl for just for it ain't no girl in here. I'm sorry. It's nobody in here but me and Blue. Maybe I was talking to Blue. So, Naya is talking with her friends. They black. Okay. Just know that. All right. Just make sure you understand that Naya got friends other than these rich ass white ladies that we see in this show. So, she's talking to her friends and her friends are like, girl, what you about to do on Thursday? It's Valentine's Day. We need to get together. And Naya's like, girl, no. I'm about to make me a chocolate souffle. I'm going to have me a me evening. She going to be by herself. And that's pretty much her story, child. She went to get the cookbook at the store and she made a souffle and she was giggling about it. The end point blank period. There's nothing else to talk about with Naya. She ain't really do nothing. And I feel like she should have been getting her back blown out by that milk dud head, man. She met at the vault. But they got my girl making a souffle. I ain't gonna touch it. I'm not gonna touch that. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that where it's at. Now we're over there by my best friend, Anthony. Now see, let me let the record reflect. Anthony has needed a spinoff since the 9-9 and the 2000. I don't know why they are not using the treasure that is Anthony Scaramaldi. What? My boy, Elton Anthony is hard down Italian, baby. Don't, I don't know Italian cousins. What's his name? Anthony? I know it end with a vowel. I know that. Okay? I can't remember his name. I know the store that has end with a vowel. He needs a spinoff. Okay, I don't know why they haven't gave Anthony a spin-off. Anthony is funny AF. Anthony got a job with some fine men. You know what I'm saying? We could just be rotating fine men in and out of the show. He's single in the city, baby. He's having sex in the city, okay? Just willy-nilly sex, okay? I'm sure he's being responsible because Anthony don't play that, but I'm just saying we could why, we could do that. Anthony is age appropriate. He grumpy and he ain't playing that shit with these children out here in these streets, okay? He want to look at your yam. He want to look at your butt. If you find, he might want to get on down and take you down the way you need to go, okay? And then he going home. Why we can't watch that? Anthony is fun. I want to see his how he make his sourdough. Nah, they don't never give us enough Anthony. I have never gotten enough Anthony. And I don't know why Anthony be yelling at every single body. And he don't play that shit. Let you give him bad customer service in the store. I watch that all day long. But yet you giving me Miranda in a thick ass sweater. And I don't want her in check. Oh. Anyway. So Anthony is over at his hot fellas bread shop. Right? And the hot fellas. They was, they was fine now. It was, I was looking at them. They had one. He was looking like, I don't know, he was looking real like something. I don't know, he was he was giving me snacky. The high fellas are fussing because they in booty shorts and it's February and they cold. Anthony and I having that. Get your ass out here and deliver this holla bread, okay? He sees that one of the high fellas is using human growth 
enhancement and like he's injecting it just like right there on the bread bucket and i'm like boy that's you're not supposed to do that in the, out in the bowel like that you're supposed to keep that to yourself he didn't do that so he fired all of them because they was all on hgh human growth hormones yeah hgh and so now he don't have no high fellas to deliver his high buns where they have buns and he is in a pen so before he done fired all the high fellas for being uh you know on steroids and stuff drew barrymore show called and said that she wants him on the show to talk about his buns. Now, Tim to bring a high fella on the show, but he done fired all the high fellas for being roided up. So now he gotta find him a high fella with high buns for his buns on Drew Barrymore's show. So at LTW and Charlotte School, Rock is very popular because their ad has hit the billboard that is right outside of the school and all the people are excited about it. And Charlotte mentions that they have uh, like appointments at the top three modeling agencies. And Charlotte is very excited about that. And she's also very excited about her dog's Instagram page. And I was confused about it. But they got people that's like that. I ain't mad at it. Do what you need to do, okay? I just want Charlotte to do something different. Um, and have a little backbone about herself. But it's okay. We are moving on. So, LTW sees that her oldest son, Herbert Walker... Why I want to call this boy Herbert Walker Jr., Lord? That's not his name. His name is Herbert Jr. Is over there in the corner, like, making out with his girlfriend. And her his girlfriend has her hand like on his belt dingling around his yaminal area and i'm like i would never i would, girl, i just could never like even when i was married i never made out with my ex-husband in front of like my mom and daddy just be like rawr, rawr. like i just couldn't i just can't because i don't like people all in my business like that like when i got pregnant i was like damn everybody gonna know i was having sex Shit. Like, I don't know. I just, I just is weird. About, I'm weird about things like that. It's probably because I'm Catholic, child. Anyway, and I was like, okay, well, she seems to be a little forward. And then LCW is like, oh, hell no. And so she goes over and, like, stops them. She doesn't, like, make them leave or take the child with her. She just is like, hey, what's going on? Knock it off. Whatever. So I was like, all right, well, at least she said something. Because Charlotte would have been like, well, they're free to express their sexuality. Bless my soul, y'all. We get to Miranda. And she's scrolling on the LGBTQ dating app sites. She don't know if she's straight or not, or she don't, she was just attracted to Chase, so she don't really know. But she's not looking on Hinge, and she's not looking on, you know, Bumble or Coffee Meets Bagel. You can tell I've been out here, child. But she's looking strictly on LGBTQ sites. So she gets a call from Che and does not answer the phone. And I tell you, when I saw Che's name pop up on that phone, I said, baby, I don't have time for whatever they got going on. Whatever they about to be, I've got to get a thing and a thing. But it was OG Miranda popping through. She looked very unbothered about the fact that she was calling me. Oh, I said, yeah, that's progress. Yeah, I like it. And yet another example of how Che ain't shit. Che and Carrie come from eating cheeseburgers. And then Che asks Carrie, hey, is Miranda ghosting me? Because I called her and she didn't answer. And then Carrie was like, well, she not, not ghosting you. Because when she ends things with her exes, she gets very introspective. And Carrie was trying to tell Che about how it affects Miranda when Miranda goes through a breakup or a loss. And then Che says, uh, Carrie, thanks. I don't need a TED talk on Miranda. You ain't shit. Hashtag throw Che away. Che and Carrie are walking down the street and like a stray dog runs across the across their path. And Carrie does that yelp that she does. And Che looks to see that it's like a stray dog. So Che takes the stray dog to this, I guess like a rescue or a shelter. Not far from where they are. Apparently Che used to work at this shelter and the person offers Che a job at the shelter. And I'm like, girl, take that. Stay away from that comedy stage, <laughs> baby. Take, take whatever they're offering you. As long as you stay up off of that comedy stage, baby. Because we not, that's not your path. That's not what the Lord meant for your life, Che. I think he got something else in store for you. Just explore your options, my love. Okay, be with them animals. At least if you tell the jokes to the animals, you can pretend like they're laughing. Because if they could laugh, they would not. So Miranda and I are in a bookstore looking for a cookbook for... Naya so she can make her sad ass souffle. Miranda is like, am I a lesbian? And she's asking another person if she's a... <laughs> she's asking somebody else if she's a lesbian. Let's let's roll past that child. And so Naya is like, girl, do something. I don't know. Anyway, she wanders to the back of this bookstore where they're having a reading and she is uh, looking at this this person reading a like an excerpt from like Jane Austen or Pride and Prejudice or 
Bleep, blop, and floop to do, child. I don't know. They reading from something in the back of the store. She approaches a person and she's like, oh my God, I love you. I used to run reading, listening to your audiobooks, And I love the sound of your voice. I love the way you read. They gonna go out on a date on Valentine's Day. And that was nice, okay? Because it's not cheap. That's what we looking for. So Carrie and Miranda on the phone talking about how she is going to have sex with this person. And the thing that I took away from this scene is that Miranda laid in her bed with her outside clothes on. That's how I know. <laughs> she can't be trusted. She cannot be left to her own devices. Because take your outside clothes off before you lay in your bed. All right? I This New York, baby. Y'all got some industrial strength germs out there. Y'all got international germs, worldwide germs in, in New York City. Take your outside clothes off before you get in the bed here, folks. Because I'm just telling you what I know. Don't bring them outside germs in your bed. All right? Change your sheets once a week. Just keep a sanitized bed. That's all I'm trying to say. So... Charlotte goes to her house and she's like... Harry, get on the open table and find us a reservation. Harry was trying to take a nap, child, and she want Harry to find somewhere to go. And Charlotte says that Lily is having an F the boys party because the boy that she gave up her virginity to has broken up with her right before Valentine's Day. Pause. Because that's when you have a conversation with your child. Well, Charlotte didn't do that. Charlotte said that Lily said that they having an F the boys party and that they can't be at the house. And so now they got to find something to do. Where we living at, folks? I don't understand. Like, did Charlotte and Harry spend all that time to make themselves professional people to give this girl a Park Avenue lifestyle where she wants for nothing only to be told, mama, go give me some condoms and get the hell out your own self house. I am confused about it. If somebody could please write me a gently worded email and let me know what the f is going on. That's all I'm asking. I, I don't feel like that's a big ask. I just want to know why Lily gets to run the house. Baby, y'all can have y'all can have a living room. Y'all can have a kitchen. Y'all can have a living room. I'm not going away if I don't want to go nowhere. Matter of fact, you're not going to go nowhere if I don't want you to go nowhere. You might not go nowhere if I don't want to go nowhere. If I don't want to go nowhere, maybe the whole house don't want to go nowhere, even if you actually do. Because guess what? I am the parent. I don't understand what we talking about. Like, I don't... Just leave me alone with that. I don't... Yeah, listen, I'm tired. Shania told my whole life down. Okay, it's Thursday. I'm still tired from Monday. I don't have time. I don't have time for the shenanigans or the malarkey. Talking about, I got... You got... You literally say we can't be here. Lily, who? Lord, I love you. Because that's the only person I know that could say, get up out your house and you go ahead and go. I don't know. Is it the Lord they referring to or is it their child? Because if it's the first, go ahead and go. If it's the latter, get out my face. Then Charlotte going to say, the boy broke up with her two weeks before Valentine's Day. So if Lily want to have an F the boys party with the cool girls from school, then F us. F who? F who, baby? What you talking about? Because F stands for flagrant. And what you're doing right now is flagrant. The F who? F us? What they got to do with us? Y'all didn't even want to talk to the child about sex and relationships and boundaries and what can happen and how your feelings get involved. You ain't want to hit her with no soul ties conversation. And now the boy done dumped her because he done gave her the yam and got what he needed. And he ain't want to give her no Valentine's Day present. And you just like, yeah, I'm going to leave you in the house by yourself to your own device with these children. I don't know. Baby, let me tell y'all something. Sex is really serious because you could end up messing up your whole life like Dorothy's born that. Okay, Dorothy's born that said she ain't even know she lost her virginity until nine months later when the baby came. Okay, don't be Dorothy's born that. Okay, don't be Dorothy. Be Blanche. No, don't be Blanche. I take that back because Blanche was out here living wild, child. Don't be rope. No. Child, don't be none of the golden girls. Just mind your business. Sit down, okay? I, I would like to recommend that we leave the children out of the show. You gonna, you gonna quit abusing us with these children. It's like you, you just really want us to dislike all these children. The only child I like in this show is Gabby. That's LTW's little baby with the little sugar bush. Because she don't do nothing. She don't know nothing. She don't go nowhere. She just be at the house. She the only one I like if she stay out the way. All right, I ain't come here looking for these children. These children piss me off. Because LTW's oldest son comes in and says, Mom, Dad... Baxter's mom, the little, boy, the little girl that was holding on to his um, frontal yamification area, right? Oh, she got us, his, her mom and daddy got us a room at the Mandarin Oriental. Where these, why? Listen, is it a rich people thing? 
that you just is like, listen, let me get you a room at the Mandarin goddamn Oriental, 1,200 US American dollars a night so you can have sex with my daughter. What the hell? I don't understand. Does that really happen? I know it don't. I ain't about to ask y'all no question. Don't answer me. Because I already know the question. I already know the answer to the question. Because y'all out here playing in my face. Then LTW tells her son, nah, she ain't get you no room. Because your ass going to be at the house. You ain't going to no damn Mandarin or you know. Then he got it on his mind to say, you embarrassed me at school, mom. Like with a little, with a little chip on his shoulder. And I say, who, who are you referring to, my love? You talking to your mama? I'm confusion. And maybe it's just, nah, I, I can't even justify it. The, you know, the old Southern thing that we just don't, we don't, it's certain things we just don't do. They're just not acceptable down here. Cause I can't even say that. Cause I know, I know that it's some up top people, some East Coast people, some West Coast people that would never be like, mom, I want to have sex and you won't let me. You embarrass me at school, mom. Like I already knew. Don't even answer my question. I got a cousin from El Salvador told me she was uh, watching the content. Hey, cousin from El Salvador. I already know you wouldn't tell your mama you was going to the hotel to have sex neither and then get in her face talking about how she embarrassed you. I already know you wouldn't cousin. Don't you worry about it. It's a worldwide thing. Cause they got me hot. He going off on LTW talking about how she's being uptight. And then Herbert says, well, is it too late for me not to be here? And I'm confused why these men are not raising their children. Is it just like Don Draper, like I'm gonna provide for you, I'm gonna give you the money so that you don't starve and you don't be on the street. But other than that, I ain't gonna fuck with you like that because these parents ain't parenting and it's upsetting me and my homegirls. It got me hot in here and it's 60 something degrees in this room. I think it's like 64 degrees, child. I think I'm going through early menopause because I be hot all the time and when my nerves get bad, I get flushed in the face and I get hot and they got me fanning with my popcorn. So that's how I know it's real, okay? So the, the boy was like, well, now we don't have anywhere to go for Valentine's Day, mom. And then Herbert was like, well, you could just hang here. We're not going to be here. Your brother and sister, they got sleepovers. Y'all could just hang at the house. You're going to have the whole place to yourself. And then he's like, fine. Like, huh? Okay, let's go. <laughs> I think I flustered right quick. LTW is like, hey, you know they're going to fucking our bed, huh? You already know that. That little girl that he with ain't got no boundaries. So now we with Charlotte and Anthony. And Anthony is telling Charlotte about how he don't have no more buns for his hot fellas. All right? <laughs> not buns, child. No more men. <laughs> that was my bad. And so Charlotte is like, listen, I'm in this car store. And they got this cute ass boy sitting down. And he look broke, child. He'll probably do it. He's selling pawns. He writing pawns for a dollar a piece on Valentine's Day. He ain't got no money. He probably desperate. And he look good. Let me go get him. So Charlotte goes up to him. He's like, hey, boy. What you doing? You want to make some money? And he's like, listen, lady. I'm not a whore, all right? I am not a sex worker. His name is Giuseppe, and he's Italian. So Giuseppe is very cute, very handsome. He used to do the Hot Fellas show with Anthony for the Drew Barrymore show, so that's that's great. Child, they get to the Drew Barrymore show, and the boy put on the Hot Fellas uniform with his booty cheeks out, and the man got a plantain growing from his pelvis, okay? I was like, God damn, Giuseppe? How many peas do you have? Cause P is for penis. It's Buku peas and Giuseppe and his peas and the pan and peas and peas is like lots of peas happening. I'm like, God damn boy. That's not morning time. Okay, Anthony was trying to get him some morning time. He wanted a little, a little speed bump. Okay, he didn't want the Grand Canyon. Okay, Giuseppe pulled out and was like, hey, you ready to go? Boy, you got to put that thing up. They gonna cut that out. Cause the yam was too protrude, it was protrude. That was another pee. It's peas all around. Protruding presidential sized penis was coming out of the pants for the peas of Giuseppe. <laughs> hey, I'm childish. It was just... <laughs> Ooh, y'all goofy. So Giuseppe bring the, bear, the bread basket out on the show and just knock poor Drew Barrymore down with his yam damn there, okay? And the bread in the basket was shaped like a yam too. I'm like, boy, y'all just out here. Tra and I was like, listen, they didn't put Drew Barrymore in a in a Colonel Sanders bowl too. You know how I feel about them bowls, child. And Drew couldn't even tell. Now, I love Drew Barrymore, okay? And she was just very flustered, baby. Drew didn't know what to do. She was like, Lord, I, how you, uh, what, when did, and what time is it when you get, and it's a sourdough in a basket in the, on the thing? She was having like a little mild stroke, child. And I was like, yeah, I get it. Because you ain't expect to see no yam like that unless it's like a bachelorette party or like a Tuesday in New Orleans. And then Giuseppe was like, yeah, how y'all doing? Like, he ain't know he had no big ass yam in this thing. You better get out of here. Giuseppe with the peas. 
You better get. So Giuseppe say, all right, Anthony, I'm gonna see you when I see you because I got your Venmo, I'm about to go. And it's like, nah, baby, you can't do that because we, I'm about to make, get, we about to get these coins, okay? I got a hundred bread orders and they, they looking for Giuseppe to deliver the coins and the bread and want the peas, okay? So Giuseppe agrees to work for Anthony for one week and it looked like they had a little flirty flirty and I was, I was here for that. I would like to see Anthony, don't forget about Anthony. Anthony is where the sauce is, okay? Anthony got the juice. Anthony got the sauce. He need to get his bag blown out or blow somebody else back out expeditiously. I need that for my boy, okay? And it would be great if it was with Giuseppe with the peas because he got the peas. You know what I'm saying? The yams is yamming over there and I'm just excited for the potential of yam for Anthony, okay? Now we cut to Seema and Kerry going to get a massage, right? Now, I don't even know what this scene was about, y'all, because Carrie was giving me James Evans from Good Times. That girl had a Kangol on and a jet. I swear I've seen James Evans wear that exact outfit. On his way from or on his way to the unemployment line because he could never keep no damn job. I was like, why they put, why they gave her the James Evans special? I was distracted. So some kind of way she was supposed to get a massage with Steam Money was supposed to have two separate rooms, but because it was Valentine's Day, they booked it as a special that only couples could be in the place. They only have two cup. It was, I, that was that was weird. That was a bad business model for the spa. Seema was looking cute, girl. She looked like a, a Arctic fox. All white fur, coat and shirt and pants and clip and whatever. You know, Seema gonna bust down on the fur now. They couldn't They couldn't get the massage because the, the, the spa only took couples on Valentine's Day. And Seema was like, is there a day when y'all discriminate against couples? When, like, how how does that work? She, was, she had a valid point, because that was stupid as hell. But anyway, she was dressed like James Evan Carroll was, and it was confusing. I think that's what happened in the scene, child. I just was giggling down, child. I didn't know why it hit me the way that it did, but it definitely did. <laughs> it definitely did. So now with Charlotte, she taking Rock to these modeling agencies, and they are running behind. The appointment was for one o'clock. It's 140 and Charlotte gets up and comes completely unglued with the lady at the front desk. This is unacceptable. We got, you know, appointments at Wilhelmina and, and MGM or WCM or ACA or CBS or something like that. You know, if you don't want to take us, then we going to go somewhere else. And she was just like, I don't know. It was just very, I don't know, whatever. They get home and Rock is like, yeah, I'm about to quit. Because you just embarrassed me in front of her. Like, you was doing team too much. Then she gets home and Lily is in the middle of her F the boys party. And Lily, all she does is see her mama and is like, Ma, get out. You're ruining the mood. Like, she was like yelling at you. And Charlotte was like, I just got here. God damn. And so she's like, I bought you a cake to celebrate for Valentine's Day or whatever. And then she's like, we don't need it, take it away. Cause Jamie brought brownies and we got enough dessert. Well, that's fine, honey, okay, have fun. All right. So Lily put her out, but before Charlotte left, she took a brownie off the thing and ate it and left to go to dinner with Harry. So they had dinner, you know, waiting to get their table. And Charlotte is like hollering in the middle of this damn restaurant. Fine, if you don't wanna be a model, that's fine. And you gonna say that I was, like she was like going Hamilton. And then she was like, you know what? I think I could see my eyeballs. Like she started tripping. And so Harry was like, girl, you having a stroke. And so they all, they go up to the uh, hostess and the hostess is like, I told you, you gonna, I'm gonna get to you when I get to you. And Harry was like, call the fucking ambulance. I was like, hell yeah, Harry. So now we over there with Miranda and Naya. Naya is making this fucking souffle and Miranda is, Cute. She got a cute little dress on and some gold heels and she's looking cute and she's feeling spicy. And then of course she put this thick ass knit coat on and she get up out the door because the lady or the person from the bookstore has invited Miranda to her house instead of to dinner. And so Miranda's going to the house and Miranda's feeling great, feeling good. Miranda gets to the house, baby, it's an episode of Hoarders. All right, she's living in squalor. All right, she got... She didn't get dressed. She looked greasy and dirty. Um, the house is dirty. The house is small. The house is cluttered. The lady got a rabid, feral ass cat in the bathroom. And, you know, she's very different from the way that she appeared in the bookstore. And so they start to make out. But the lady steps in a cat litter box that's full of shit. Yeah. It was full of sh it was full of shit, and the lady's like, you know what? I need to go get the I need to wash the sheets right quick. 
if we gonna have sex on the sheets. I forgot to wash the sheets. You got quarters? I'm like, bitch, what? Who? What? What do you think? What you thought I was going to the arcade after I left here? So I'm gonna bring buku quarters with me? What you talking about? Oh, don't worry about it. I'm gonna have to stop at the bodega and I'm gonna give me some stuff and I'm gonna go get some uh, stuff while I'm out and I'm gonna get the thing. Don't go in the bathroom because the cat gonna scratch your ass up. Okay, bye. And she like went to go wash the sheets. And Miranda's like, all right. Mm. Seems like the red flag detector once again is off, broken in the shop. I don't even care. Child, I wish you would have stayed there. She didn't stay, but I wish you would have, okay? Because that's what she deserved. You deserve to be in an apartment full of cash shit, Miranda, because I'm tired of you. Then she had to get on the phone with Carrie to determine and to remind herself that at 56 years old, she don't have to do nothing. I'm confused because she had already knew that in her 30s. But baby, when she hit the 50s in this show, she just got, she just didn't have no clear understanding about it. Not one single thing. Oh yeah, that's right. 30 year old Miranda would stay and try to figure out what to do and give her a shot. But 56 year old Miranda doesn't have to do that. No, bitch, you don't actually. Ugh. So Charlotte is at the hospital. The hospital, the doctor is like, girl, uh, you high. So they figure out that one of the brownies at Lily's party was a spicy brownie. It was a fun brownie. It was a to the moon brownie. And so in the flash of a uh, thought that she was gonna die, Charlotte was like, you know what? I'm sick of all y'all. I need to do something for myself. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That is the case. I'm glad to know you listening. So she said she was going to call the man from LCW sad ass anniversary dinner and see if that job is still available at the art gallery. Please, Jesus, let it be. Please let it be, Lord, because she needs something to do. Finally, we with Carrie and we about to get the tea. Okay, so Carrie's at the restaurant at 60 West 55th Street or something like that. The numbers and the street directionals in New York confuse me to this day. I have been going to New York all of my adult life. I started going when I was 18. And I stopped going during Fantasia and I haven't been back since. But I'm pretty familiar with New York. I don't understand. The north and the south, the, the high numbers go east and west. And the low numbers and the letters go this way. And it's like a directional situation. Child, I be confused. Because how is it 16 West 16th Street? What? How? It's 233rd West 33rd Street. Get get it. Get out. Get, it's too many numbers. Because you be confused in my spirit. It had confused Carrie too. Because she was at the wrong restaurant. So she got to the restaurant and was sitting there and it was like 806 and she thought she was gonna make her grand entrance. No bitch, you by yourself. <laughs> you by yourself. Uh, so they start texting and they're like, hey, where you at? And it was like, I'm in a, I'm in a, Aiden was like, I'm in a red boot. And then Carrie was like, mm, man, I'm a boot, my love, man. what's going on? Then she goes outside and she's trying to figure out which way to go. Is it to the left or to the right? And then when she turns around, Aiden is right there in a space suit, but he's looking good. All right, my boy was looking like a little Neil Armstrong great grand son. But he was looking nice, though. I was like, okay, eh, I see you, little eh. I was like, boy, you better build me some Adirondack chairs, boy, or whatever the hell he used to be building boats or something. I don't know. But I was like, hell yeah, Aiden. They go into the restaurant, and they have good banter. Aiden and Carrie have always had good chemistry. Aiden makes her laugh and, like, giggle and shit, and he don't, like, it was, the vibes have always been good with them, too except for Carrie was involved in it and she's a vibe killer. So you know how that go. But the vibes were great. They get in a cab and they go to Carrie's house. Now, this is why I was like, what you even talking about? Cause if it was an Uber, I could see how he wouldn't have noticed that Carrie was going to her house, the same house that he used to live in, that he had bought the thing next door and was trying to do the whole renovation. We about to make a life here kind of address. But it was a cab. So when you get in the cab, you got to say, hey, take me to 233rd West 33rd Street. And then the cab would be like, all right, bet. And then he'd take you to 233rd West 33rd Street. So how he didn't know where they was going. But anyway, he went to the place. And he was like, oh, shit, you still live here? And Aiden was like, I'm not going in there. And I said, motherfucking period. Hell no. Because everything in there was all bad, okay? She was yamming big down, okay? She told you to shut up and she made fun of your road game, goddamn. You don't need to go up in there and ain't got no good members in there. She lost your goddamn dog. She cheated on you. And then she was crying and talking about saying when, when you broke up with her and you ain't want to give her no second chance. Then, you, then she saw your lady in Abu Dhabi or whatever the hell. Keep running into you just fucking your life up. Well, one of you raised your standards? And that's on Sophia Petrillo. So he was like, I'm not going in there. I'm about to go. But then, you know, he wanted to give it a yam. So he was like, man, we just go get a hotel. And so they started making out. And that's how the episode ended. Just like that, Aiden was giving a yam again. And, you know, they back together. Look like I hopefully they just, you know, it'd be a one and done. Because maybe he live in Vermont. And, you know, he'd be, you know, I don't know. He, he was looking good, though. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. You're holding on. Uh, 
So I liked the episode, y'all. The episode wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, y'all. I'm okay with the midness of the episode because a mid episode is way better than a trash ass episode with these people that spouted from pods that was trying to impersonate these people we've been riding with for almost 30 years. It was, it's a little refreshing when Miranda ignored the phone call from Trey. I'm like, hell yeah, that's Miranda. And when Charlotte wanted to go get back to her own self and wanted to go get back in the art game. Hell yeah, I like that. I like to see that. You love to see it, okay? Charlotte eating a little brownie. That was fun. That was a little shenanigan. That was a little kawinky dink. I like that. Give me a little something to, to, to work with. You know what I'm saying? Don't just give me hard times and, you know, hormones and shit. Like, give me something fun. Get rid of Lily. Send her wherever you send it. Che to the LTW baby. She can stay home. Every other child, send their ass to a way camp where we don't need to see them no more. Like, I, you know, like they don't need to go to boarding school. Rich people send their children to boarding school because they don't want to have their children no more. Send their asses to boarding school. Comment down below and let me know what you thought of this episode. I'm going to go to sleep now because I will never, once again, will never be going anywhere in my big ass age on a weekday okay because now i got my laundry's backed up i didn't make my beans like i wanted so i'm just tore up now never again so if you invite me for dinner because we some of us are talking about going to dinner and stuff make sure it's a friday saturday or sunday brunch because after three o'clock i don't go nowhere i'm gonna talk to you later bye